Hey everybody, what's going on? Juan here, joined alongside Ryan and Keith to talk about one of the questions that we got from our awesome supporters at Patreon. And let's not waste any time and get to that awesome question. So the question yeah. is, NXT, it's gone from a game show to a star-making training camp to what it is now. The last few years, NXT has changed. It's gone from turning unknown stars to superstars to bringing in ready-made stars who already have a gimmick and personality and they just use that and run with it. I don't get half as much pleasure watching NXT now to when I did when the Wyatts and Enzo and Cass, etc. were coming through. So this is from Gold Supporter Liam Vincent. First of all, thank you for the question. And this is something that it's been boiling up for a little while. Uh, for context, Ryan hasn't really watched NXT much aside from the takeovers. I watch NXT every week. And then Keith, he watches it every, every now, now and, and then. Every now and then, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the topic is that it seems like when NXT started, it was almost a sideshow. ECW became NXT, and it became a game show. It was ridiculous. Later on, it became NXT Redemption, and then they figured out, let's turn NXT into our actual developmental territory where we can build up characters, and then inevitably those people can move up to the main roster and we got guys, like he mentioned, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt, most of the members of The Shield. A lot of the main roster people right now originally had their start in NXT. But what happened after your Finn Balor and your Shinsuke Nakamura's, which even those guys, as an example, already had previously established characters in places like New Japan Pro Wrestling. What you have now is your Bobby Roode, your Kyle O'Reilly, your Bobby Fish. Yes, there is NXT homegrown talent still around the roster, like a No Way Jose, Heavy Machinery, other people that are being built up. But it seems like NXT sort of changed what it originally was. And Ryan, as somebody that doesn't watch NXT on a week-to-week -week basis, I'd like to know, is that one of the primary reasons why you maybe don't care about NXT as much? Do you not see NXT as the thing that it used to be? What do you think about NXT right now? Yeah, see... My an interest in NXT was sort of way back in maybe the 2013, 2014 days when it was this sort of just this little thing that was just kind of happening in the background where it was a lot of uh, new talent. And, you know, there was still like some top indie talent mixed in there, but it was very much a breeding ground and now i feel like it's turned into sort of wwe's indie show with it's got a lot of names and you they feel the pressures that almost the main roster is about we have to have this big star on the show and we have to make sure we have a good card for a takeover and all the pressures, main roster things are starting to kind of leak down to NXT when before NXT just used to be this no pressure. We do whatever we want. If a gimmick doesn't work one week, we're going to flip the script the next week because it doesn't matter. It's it's a developmental show. And you got to see, you know, a character like Tyler Breeze develop and um a character like Bo Dallas become what it was from this baby face that nobody liked. They turned that on a dime and made Bo Dallas this amazing heel that thinks he's a baby face. A lot of really cool things happened in NXT. And now I feel like, you know, Bobby Roode's great and all, but I don't feel like Bobby Roode is that different from what he was before he came to NXT. And you're just kind of getting a lot of great talents don't get me wrong but they're kind of coming in and doing the same thing when uh seeing that real developmental process that growth of a character and then see them ready to hit the main roster like what we saw with happened with bailey we saw bailey grow and develop through nxt and then make it to the main roster i feel like that might be a big thing that is missing and now they just have they are kind of dropped into this formula of we need a big name to hold the title and they're going to hold the title for a while and then a new big name is going to come in and in a couple months they're going to feud with that the champion and rinse and repeat they get called up to the main roster yeah nxt nxt's the feeling has definitely changed around it 
Even though it had its own set of problems, I think the worst thing that happened to NXT was the fact that it left Full Sail University at all times. Because it that's really when it stopped being this developmental system. And more of like Ryan mentioned, an indie show where now you're going on the road, you're going on tour, you need to make sure you have big names to fill that um, to fill those marquee spots like your Bobby Roode, your Roderick Strongs, your Cassius Onos, guys that really don't need developmental all that much beyond just learning the WWE style. Now you have them hogging hogging the spotlight in NXT when there's actual people that the WWE are like developing in NXT that kind of get lost in that shuffle. Now that it's a a road show, it feels it de- really does feel more like an indie show than it does the WWE developmental show. Like, hey, this is this is the cool kid show where all the guys you like are going to be on NXT, and maybe they'll go to the main roster one day. Who knows? But it's uh, I don't know if it changed for the better. Yeah, one of the examples I remember is Baron Corbin. How Baron Corbin was a jobber for a lot of weeks in NXT, then all of a sudden he was still the same character. But then he was an unbeatable force, and he never lost. And that, like Ryan mentioned, was the magic, the magic of NXT to me, which was finding characters. You brought up Bailey, and that is the epitome of an example where, from day one, people and I, and I sort of mentioned this in in the uh, Can WWE Build Baby Faces video, which is up on the channel and also in the BT Plus. And I mentioned that Bailey's character in NXT was able to grow from a cringy character that many people didn't support to eventually having match of the year with Sasha Banks, having Iron Man matches, having you know this huge fan base develop. But when she moved up to the main roster, all of a sudden she was just Bailey from NXT. What's her character? Well, she was built up and now here she is. And it seems like Bailey on Raw is what we're getting in NXT with people that are coming from elsewhere, which is like, you already know this person, you know their background, you probably brought, bought one of their t-shirts when they were in the indie scene, so hopefully that keeps things going. And I, I, get, I get it. From a business standpoint, it makes sense. You know, you're going on the road, so you can't rely on thinking that uh, No Way Jose is going to he- sell out seats, right? You need your Oscars. You need all of the guys that we've mentioned. But I think there could be a balance. And I think that it just sort of sucks that it doesn't seem we're going to get a lot of the Baileys. We're getting things. You know, you look at Nikki Cross. You look at Sanity. Even though there's Eric Young in there, there's, it's still an NXT established stable right but it doesn't seem like the entire show is that it's like the bottom of the show is kind of like that but then the very top is reserved for the people that you already knew about yeah and and don't get me wrong we understand why nxt is the way it is and it really comes down to money they're going to make a lot more money if they have bigger names headlining shows and that they can tour and all that it's just that a lot of the original magic of NXT has sort of to has started to kind of drift away. And and that's just the thing. When when something gets bigger, it has to kind of get further and further away from what it originally started out being. And we get the business standpoint of that. But the viewing experience, I feel like, has changed. And you know, we know all these guys are very super talented. It's just I think the magic of NXT was seeing that development process. And that's just not the priority it used to be. And yeah, they could definitely mix things up a a bit and give uh, some other guys more opportunities to showcase themselves in the main event scene. Uh, I think that might be the issue. And maybe you guys agree or disagree, but the main event scene might just be a little too stale in NXT that it seems no matter who it is, it seems to be the same formula. Well, I mean, you can look back to when Kevin Owens won the NXT championship. The main champion has been an already established person since then, because it was Owens, Balor, Joe, Nakamura, Rude. All of these guys are big names without NXT. They haven't really built a championship caliber material. Now, I'm not saying that that's like some golden stamp of approval, like you're going to succeed if you're champion, because there are people like Baron Corbin who succeed even though they, um, they were never NXT champion. But it's... Old NXT, back when when we talk about, like, the golden age of NXT, that was around the time that, like, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe were champion. At least that's how I see it. Or even Neville. Or even Neville. Yeah, yeah. They had a... 
they had a very, very sweet balance of they had those established guys that made their name elsewhere. And they also had the guys that they were building on their own. People like Sami Zayn were big parts of the show while Tyler Breeze was still uh, was still finding his character. And it just feels like NXT these days are lean is leaning really, really hard into the already established people. And like Ryan mentioned, we the business part, I totally get it. You need to put asses in seats at the end of the day, especially if you are going on the road. And if you have a name that people know, that people want to see, like Shinsuke Nakamura, like Bobby Roode, then it's really easy to fill those seats. But at the same time, you're you're losing some of the actual magic of NXT where you build people like Bailey, where people don't know Bailey before she was in NXT. Even Alexa and you get Bliss. To wa- you know, and she even was Alexa Bliss. Blitz, Sparkle Bliss. And then she became you know, the uh, uh, Blake and Alexa and Murphy factor or whatever it was. But the magic was maybe some things don't work. Maybe some things do work. But mm-hmm. it seems like they, they can't play that off. So I guess the question is, did the purpose of NXT change from being this developmental show to now it's the third show? And if that's the case, then what really happens to your your No Way Jose? I keep bringing it up as an example because if you look at a Bo Dallas, it seems like if Bo Dallas went back down to NXT, he would get destroyed. Like It seems weird to think of, hey, here's Bobby Roode, Nakamura, Balor, Joe as NXT champions. Remember when Big E and Bo Dallas were champions? It seems like right. this thing that never actually happened. The game has definitely changed, and it really is. It's become a brand more so than a developmental, and even Triple H has said that before. So it, it really has been this big shift. And I think, you know, NXT TakeOvers, they're still very enjoyable shows. They're, you know, they're still, it, it's just a great wrestling show to watch most of the time. Very rarely. Uh, do they disappoint but I do think the the rabid fanfare has kind of settled I don't feel the the same passion for NXT that uh, I feel it used to have and I'm not sure if a lot of other people feel the same way we feel um, but there could be a correlation between that and that's not yeah, to say it's not an enjoyable show, because I still like to watch it every week, but it's no longer this, hey, I would rather watch NXT than SmackDown Live. I see it as I like SmackDown, and on the weekends, I'll catch NXT if I can, and if not, I'll just binge watch two episodes. But that must-watch, must-see development, going all the way back to when the takeovers happened on Wednesday. So, you know, the takeovers used to be, hey, instead of a normal taped NXT, we're going to do a live, like... NXT was one of the first live shows on the network and people forget about that. And that was what it's all about for me, right? Like, let's try this out if it doesn't work. But now it's just so clean. But I guess it it really boils down to the fact that times have changed. Keith, is there anything you want to close it up with? Not really. Uh, I think we hit most uh, most of my feelings on it just Pull it back a little bit. Pull it back to what it used to be. And I think that's that beautiful sweet spot of NXT because I think this might be a a discussion for another day. But I think there is something to be said about too much development in NXT where you could almost look at somebody like a Bailey and uh, say maybe there was just a little too much happening for her in, in NXT in comparison to what's going on in the main roster. But you still need that. That's such an important part of the WWE developmental system that you um, that gets lost these days, or at least feels like it takes a step back. So just find find that sweet middle ground. It's a sweet place. Yeah, yeah I kind of know what you're saying in the way that Bailey got so much character development done in NXT that there wasn't a lot of room on the main roster. There's got to be transition. When, in reality, they should have just started over on the main roster and just told that story again. I think it would have been much better. But um, NXT, yeah, I I personally, I miss the old NXT. Not that the wrestling isn't great on the current NXT. And another thing I kind of miss is now they have the star power. They don't need to do it. But I miss when main roster guys would come down for like one feud. Cesaro. You know, when Natalia came down to feud with Charlotte or this, the amazing Sami Zayn and Cesaro feud. That kind of stuff just doesn't happen anymore, and I miss that. God, it was great. 
a lot of great things about old NXT and uh, Bike Club. We would love to know what you think about all this. Do you think that NXT has changed for the better, for the worst? Do you not enjoy it nearly as much as you used to? As I mentioned, I still like to watch it. So this is not a video to hate on TNA. Uh, hate on TNA. <laughs> hate on NXT. <laughs> that's a, that's a whole Whoa. other can of worms. It, it doesn't even <laughs> exist anymore. David, I was doing so well. Subconsciously no. hate in <laughs> TNA just find their way next to each other. You know, just, but it's hey. you could call yeah you could that t- if you hate tna boy you could feel a lot of that in current nxt and i'm just gonna leave that one right there oh no we're gonna talk about tna management now but folks if you like this trade wreck or, or the bottom portion here uh you can subscribe to our channel on youtube you can give us a huge thumbs up wherever you are listening to us uh, remember that we are a crowd-funded, crowd-supported podcast and uh, wrestling channel. You can go over to patreon.com slash bite that and become a supporter on Patreon. So you can get things such as exclusive updates to everything we're working on. Gold supporters get access to uh, videos before they are published to the world. They get access to live private shows where we have a chat, basically a uh, a private podcast that we can directly interact with the chat, and we're working on a ton of other features. So once again, patreon.com slash bite that. So until next time, we look forward to your comments so we can keep talking more about NXT and not TNA because it doesn't even exist anymore right here on Bite That. <laughs>